Hey guys, Johnny from Ignite here. Thanks for tuning in to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the form of Metropolis. That is the formal elements that shape the composition as a whole. But before we get into that, please do make sure you check out our extensive HSC English resources, including a, an amazing resource on Metropolis at ignitehsc.com.au. There's a lot to offer in these resources. They've got everything to cover for the syllabus in practical terms, how to do things in an essay. It's all there. But without further ado, let's get into the video and look at the form of Metropolis. Okay, so the first thing to note is that we're dealing with a film here. It's not a novel, it's not a poem, it's not a play, it's a film. And when you're trying to appreciate the importance of form, you really do want to note the distinction that the text type has with other text types. Here we're dealing with a film. Why is that important against a novel? What separates a film from a novel? Well, a lot of it comes from the visual dimension because we are getting an objective visual representation rather than a subjective one that is to be created in our mind as a reader of a novel. When you read a novel, you're not just being directly shown the image that you simply have to take on and then interpret. So with a film, we've got this objective visual reality, this objective visual platform that we're dealing with which is really significant because when you're provided with visual stimulus, you really are absorbed directly into the objective reality that has been created by the composer, in this case, Lang. That's very much different to a novel, which is far more inviting and has a broader scope of interpretation of what a scene might look like. It's very important with this particular film that we do see the visual reality because going to our next point, this is an expressionist film. Now we're going to the style of the film, which is also a large part of form. So we're starting at the broadest level. It's a film. It's an expressionist film. And the expressionism is incredibly important for Lang because it's going to allow him to project the psychological trauma of everyone in Germany because they've just been defeated and humiliated after World War I and their economy is struggling and socially everyone is kind of dislocated and all over the place. We've got class inequality, we've got brutal dehumanizing working conditions and Lang actually wants to capture that in this kind of distorted visual display that actually symbolizes much of that psychological trauma. So the expressionist style of the film, this is a German expressionist film, provides a mode of external expression for the inner state of the German psyche. Really important sentence there. You've got to say something of that kind somewhere in your analysis, somewhere in your essay on Metropolis within a broader Worlds of Upheaval essay if you're doing that or on an essay on any kind on Metropolis. So what are the features of the expressionist form? Notice how we started with film, then we said it's an expressionist film. Now I want to know what the elements of expressionist film are. Well, first of all, we have this intensified chiaroscuro, which is all to do with the lighting and the shade, right? So many times during the film, and I think we have some examples on here, you'll see a contrast, a juxtaposition between dark patches on the screen and light. And the light is really used as a way of exposing vulnerability in the individual. You would think light is normally associated with positive things. That symbolism is actually inverted a lot of the time in the film. And when light is shone on an individual, it actually is to show that they're vulnerable and helpless in that particular scene. So we have an inversion of the typical symbolism. And that in itself says something about the structure and the typical beliefs of the time needing to be inverted and challenged. So... What else do we have? We have distorted configuration of geometry and exaggerated angular features. Now, there is a scene, and we'll see if we have an example here, where you see the geometric figures. You can see how kind of distorted that house is. Look, there's a normal house and then this massive roof, and then we have this tiny individual here. We have these big, disproportionately large visual macro structures, we'll call them macro structures. And in this case, that's actually to heighten the insignificance of the individual. Look how small this man looks here, this worker in the worker city compared to this disproportionately large house. So going back here, that's another example. The static camera movement. If you watch the film, you notice it's a very slow film, sometimes painfully slow for some, but it's actually very important to the expressionist style. And that is that the camera kind of just sits there in a shot and lets things just play out. There's a lot of space. There's a lot of lighting and chiaroscuro lighting going on, but the camera sits, it doesn't move, it's not dynamic, it's not moving around, it just sits. 
and it kind of allows the tensions to play out on screen. So you understand the ambiguities of meaning, you understand the tensions and the ambivalence in people's minds. They're so uncertain, they're so turbulent, and all of that can play out if you just hold the camera still and let things kind of sit or move around on screen, but keep the camera still, right? It also makes us feel uncomfortable, and that's part of the effect of doing it. So we have exaggerations. We saw that uh, in that other scene, we had the exaggerated actual physical nature of things. We have the exaggerated size, but you also see a lot of body language be very exaggerated. When Frida talks and he's, he's speaking to his father, he speaks like this, kind of how I do these videos, you know, it's all very exaggerated and the body language in itself is very telling, it's symbolic, it's a projection of the emotions, nothing is really kept inside. The giant cityscape that you see, even on the front of the cover of Metropolis, the huge city, is a signature of German Expressionism, right? It's showing that giant facade of modernity, right? Highly symbolic, these huge buildings. And that's actually really pivotal to what Lang is trying to get at because he's trying to show that, yes, you can have a huge cityscape, but what is going underneath? Think about the stratified working class who are deep below ground, right? They're very separated. That's getting at the class inequality and other issues of that kind. What is the cost of that progress? is a question that's being posed. So just to take you very quickly through some examples of these different elements, there's the giant cityscape we're talking about, a signature of German Expressionism. You can talk about that, but remember that's, that's based largely on Lang's experience in New York. He actually went to New York just before making the film and a lot of the images were inspired by that experience. And he saw that, wow, it looks so grand, it looks so amazing and progressive, but underneath we have that working class, what is actually fueling that progress in modernity? And he really makes a comment on that. Here we talked about the example of the visual macro structures. We talked about how that was to highlight the insignificance of the individual. Here's another example of that, and we'll call that gigantism, where the macro structures are so disproportionately large that the workers here are made to look so insignificant and so weak and so powerless. And that's what he's trying to get at. He's using the symbolic value of expressionism. Camera work and spacing, we've talked about that. The camera will just sit. It will just sit here, even when the bell, the gong rings in the middle of the city, right? It just sits there and lets that tension play out, lets it reverberate, encapsulating the chaos. It makes us feel uncomfortable. It makes us question. In terms of chiaroscuro lighting, as we said, we see these moments where the light is used to expose vulnerabilities, even for Friedison, who's at the top of the hierarchy, even he can be destabilized and the light is showing that in this instance. Hallucinations is another aspect of German Expressionism and the Moloch scene is a great one that shows visual uncertainty being created when Frida is visualizing this Moloch scene where the workers are being eaten up by this kind of man-eating pagan idol. Okay, so that's a pretty comprehensive rundown of a lot of the German Expressionist elements and the form of the film. You must talk about these in your analysis. Form should be at the forefront of your mind when you think about, oh, what am I going to incorporate in my essay? Make sure you include a whole lot on form and let other things, there's not really anything else specifically to talk about. It's not, it's not a hugely quotable film. So you really do want to focus on all of this. You can still reference scenes, of course, specific scenes, but make form your priority for all of your analysis. And that way you're going to come up with a really strong, comprehensive analysis of the film as a whole. It will do much better in your essay. Hope this helps. Don't forget to check out the site, ignitehsc.com.au for more comprehensive analysis on Metropolis and all your other texts for extension, advanced, standard. Otherwise, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like the content, subscribe to our channel and we'll have more videos coming your way. That's right guys, thanks for watching and please make sure you check out our online resource database. We've had a team of state rank achievers and heads of English put these together for you, covering everything from essay structures and examples all the way through to craft of writing and comprehension skills. So check them out at ignitehse.com.au and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.